Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Ying's Pie. Today we're going to be talking about stock price forecast by using LSTM, which is short for long short term memory and it's under the category of recurrent neural network. Before we get started, let's run the script. Ying's money management package. Let's talk about what this means. Recurrent neural network is a supervised machine learning problem, which means it has an X and it has a Y. We're going to feed the information forward with a timestamp, and then we're going to form some sort of belief. These beliefs allow us to make some educated guesses, and we're going to investigate these guesses by taking a look at the mistakes that we've made, which is measured by this loss function. So with that in mind, let's get started. What is the feed for a network? We're talking about sequential data. So we're going to have data that essentially are axes with a timestamp. For example, 1, 2, all the way to the last one, t. And let us construct the architecture. So we can say begin matrix and matrix. And then in this matrix, first of all, I'm going to write x. I'm going to give an arrow indicating that time is moving forward. And then we're going to write x2 all the way to the data at the last timestamp, t. Just like the structure in linear regression, where you have your features, your parameters, as well as your constant terms. In the architecture of neural network, there's X and there is the bias term. So let's write it here. This is going to be the bias for timestamp one. And then let's skip this right arrow space. And then we're gonna say bias of timestamp two. And so on. Until bias for the last time, T. This gives us a brief architecture of how the information flows through. Let us update our matrix by adding this up arrow. So we can visualize what's going on clearer. Great, so as you can see, we have bias, we have X, and then let's add in weight as well. And then we have weight here as well. And that's timestamp 2. And then here we have weight for timestamp t. So altogether, this gives us some sort of prediction. Given this feature, weights and bias, we can form some sort of prediction, right? And that's going to be y at timestamp t. And in this case, t is 1. And we can do the same thing all the way to when your timestamp equals to 2, we have a y subscript 2. And now all the way to, in the end, we have y subscript t. And then we can simply put the arrows here to make the table clearer. Now we have a feed forward architecture. Information flow in from left to right, and at each timestamp t, we make a prediction. And this x and y are both going to be sequential, which means each timestamp is unique. This is feed forward. We have our prediction, and it's going to be some sort of educated guesses. So how do we update our beliefs? So let's take a look at the loss function. We have y at a timestamp t, and then we have real y at timestamp t. We want to compare them and see how big the difference is. Well, how do we do that? We minus them, right? That's what we mean by difference. Since we want to measure these errors on a universal scale, we don't really want the signs to matter to them. So we do this. We're going to put a square out of it. So this difference, I'm going to give it a name, call it L. And that's going to tell me exactly what the loss is at time t. But here's the problem. At each time t, there is is there is a unique prediction. And this is just step one, because it's at the particular time. We want all of them, right? 
So how do we do that? We put a summation term before, before we put a summation term before, and then we give the summation term a t subscript. This is going to be the total sum of loss of the entire architecture. And then I'm going to give that a name and call it calligraphic L. And that's going to give me the overall loss function. How is this going to be helpful for me? Since I have this loss function, then what I'm going to do is I want to take gradients. So essentially what we're doing is take gradients of this loss function, which is calligraphic L, with respect to your weights, your bias, and that allows us to update what we believe in this W and in this B. The first thing we want to do is to take gradients of calligraphic L with respect to activation function A. This is going to be extremely important because we pass this x into a linear transformation along with w and b, and then we activate it using an activation function a. So when you take gradients, you need to do the other way around. You take gradients with respect to a first, and then with respect to b and w. So, we so we're going to take gradient with respect to a first, and I'm going to call it triangle. This is going to be the gradient. And then I can move on to take partial derivative with respect to parameters. And this is the place when I have partial triangle, partial weight, as well as fraction, partial triangle partial bias. This tells us exactly how we can update our classifiers according to W and B. And this symbol that you see essentially says, under the direction of this parameter, in this case, the weight, how should you update your beliefs? And how should your gradient change? in order to make the error smaller. And this entire feed forward and backward information chain flow tells us what we can do with our network structure and how we can form and update our prediction classifiers. And with that in mind, we can call the function. So I'm going to save everything in temp file. I'm going to call ins mm, and then I'm going to hit dot and I'm going to press tab, and then there are a bunch of functions that I can select. I'm going to select RNN3 regressor. And then in this function, I'm going to type in start date, let's say 2010, January 1st. End date, I'm going to say 2019, January 26th. And then perhaps I'm going to say tickers. Let's make it simple. Let's say Apple, which is something that everybody knows. And then let's check a cutoff. This cutoff means that I'm going to select 70% of the data as training and then 30% of the data as testing so that we can truly understand the robustness of this recurrent neural network. And we're going to see how good the performance is. And we can make sure we have all the units. For example, there are 128 nodes in hidden layer in hidden layer one, and then perhaps there are 64 nodes in hidden layer two, and 32 nodes in hidden layer three. And then the optimizer, I'm going to say, Adam, uh, the loss function, right? In this case, I'm going to say mean square error. And then epoch means the number of cycles going forward and backward. I'm going to set that to 20 to make things easier and faster. So now this code, so now this, all the input are written and let's run the code.
Now the machine has finished training, let's take a look at the test app performance. We plot them line by line together, and as you can see in this time series plot, the test set has about close to 600 observations, and we have the red line and the blue line. Red line is the real apple price, blue line is the predicted apple price. And if we take a look at the error, it's only about $7. So essentially, this root mean square error is $7, means that for this architecture to take educated guesses on stock price, it on average takes guesses within an area of $7.48. Considering that the stock is over $200, I say that this is fairly accurate. So there you go. I hope you liked today's episode. If you want to support the channel, give it a like and click that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next episode.